Um, our series has one central aim, um, and we want to promote digital humanities research in a broad sense, uh, in a scope as broad as possible, um, which is why we decided to go for three publication lines. Um, the first one will focus on monographical studies or studies in general, um, offering researchers a place to publish their work, um, which in some cases is not as easy as one would think, because uh, most of these studies are um, PhD studies, for example, um, working or depending on coming from the um, more traditional humanities um, disciplines, um, working with digital methods. Um, so these hybrid studies, or they are hybrid in a sense, um, they need a new place. So we want to give them a place um, for publication. Um, that is the first line. The second line uh, will be a series of introductory uh, publications. Um, for example, introductions into digital history, digital literary studies. Um, and our aim with this uh, line of publication is to bring the different humanities disciplines into a proper dialogue, which is why all the introductory uh, books will have sort of the same structure. Um, so if you read the one and then the other, you can see how they interrelate with each other. Um, that is the second line of publication. And the third line of publication aims at promoting digital methods themselves. So we will try to have sort of workshop journals, Werkstattberichte in German, um, where we will have um, something similar to maybe a special issue that you would expect to, to be in a journal focusing on practices of visualization, for example. So again, summing up, all in all, we want to sort of provide a place for people to publish in digital humanities that is meant for them um, in a very literal sense. Well, um, this project came to life in a way that most good ideas do, um, over drinks. Uh, to be honest, order, my colleague from uh, Switzerland and myself, uh, we met at a workshop on digital humanities. And afterwards, we were thinking about the exact question, where do you actually publish work that is um, sort of that uh, represents the field of digital humanities? Um, and we decided that we would just sort of create a new place to do that. And we found a group of people um, from very different fields uh, within the digital humanities who decided to join us in this endeavor. Uh, one is Anne Bayot uh, from France. She works as a literary scholar at the University of Le Mans. Then there's um, Andreas Fickers, who's a professor for digital history um, at the University of Luxembourg. And last but not least, um, our colleague Peter Stadler joined us. He's currently working in Paderborn in the field of digital musicology. So you can see there's a, it's a very interdisciplinary field, uh, also an international, uh, at least European um, focus. So um, we hope that we sort of demonstrate with this board um, already the broad scope that we are aiming for with the digital humanities research series. <laughs> this is a very difficult question um, and one that is yet to be answered properly. Um, I think one of the main definitions of digital humanities would be it's the work of humanity scholars working with digital methods. So from the beginning on, digital humanities has a very methodological focus or a focus on new methods and the reflection on these methods. But for me, digital humanities also um, has a very epistemological um, challenge, really, or poses a challenge to us as uh, humanity scholars, um, because the question is, how do you deal with digital methods and the, the fact that you have to transform your materials? Text has to be machine readable in order to use digital methods. Um, and this changes the way that we think about text that we think about our objects of research. Um, and it also, so it changes sort of the, the 
yeah, the, the research focus. Um, and that also has a theoretical implication for um, the humanities disciplines who engage with digital humanities. So I would say it's um, the closest definition would be digital humanities is rather a community than a field, a community of scholars focusing on the digital um, transformation of our disciplines. Well, as I said before, digital humanities being a community that sort of assembles around a new methodology, it's a very broad field. It's genuinely interdisciplinary and it brings together lots of sort of methods and traditions from different fields of the humanities. So um, the implications are huge, really, um, because implementing new methodologies changes the practices of researchers. Um, in their very core. Um, so let me give you an example. For example, if you think about annotation and the fact that we read texts all the time, we underline sentences and we comment, um, write down comments um, in, in text or maybe, I don't know, on a sheet of paper where we sort of think about things. Um, and if you do this digitally, um, it gives you the possibility to access the annotations in a new way. So the practice of annotation itself sort of stays the same, can be transferred into the digital realm. Um, but working the possibility of working with the annotations, let's say, for example, compare annotations in a way, um, for example, um, the inter-annotator agreement, sort of checking how um, close different annotators are with their annotations to each other, or maybe how different they are, um, sort of brings about new possibilities, new perspectives on questions of knowledge generation. Um, and this is only possible because it's sort of started or the, the annotations are made in the digital realm. So there's always the question of transferring practices into the digital, but also translating and transforming practices and inventing new ways to ask questions. So the implications are big. Um, and if you think about publishing, you could sort of um, use the same ideas really because um, we in digital history we or digital humanities we use a lot of visualization material um, so you have data and you do for example a network analysis and you have a big cluster visualization network visualization um, and if you print them uh, between book covers the whole idea of this network clustering itself and the interactive aspects of this visualization are lost. Um, so I think it is very important when we develop uh, publication formats for digital humanities that we think about interactive publication formats, digital publishing, enhanced publishing. And with Bielefeld University Press and um, Transcript, I think we have very um, exciting partners um, to take up that challenge. So I strongly believe that our series with the broad scope answers the call of the interdisciplinary field of digital humanities. I said, as I said before, lots of scholars are involved in this field, lots of different methods, lots of different theories, aims, questions, research objects. So I think with these three lines of publication that I mentioned um, answering your first question, um, tries to cover all these different disciplines and these different ideas and reflections really on on digital on the, the digital realm and digital transformations as well um, so i would say this is sort of on the one hand we are trying to mirror um, the broad field um, through the editorial board and also through these three lines of publication and a second major point why I believe that our series is digital digital humanities um, or represents uh, digital humanities is that there's a big discussion about these new forms of publication that I mentioned uh, before. And um, in within our series and in cooperation with Transcript, we're trying to um, develop a new publication platform that will allow authors to not only 
publish their research work in forms of articles or books, but also publish their data and the visualizations in an interactive way. So that the research process that digital humanities is all about and the new methodologies remain visible in the publication. Um, and not, so there's a big chance, I think, for digital humanities in developing these new publication formats. And that is why I believe that um, our series is sort of at the heart of this endeavor.